Hey guys, Rich Ripper here, and today I'm going to show you how you can update the BIOS on an MSI motherboard. So the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out exactly what model of motherboard you have. If you already know that, then good, you can skip this step. But the easiest way is to usually look in Windows. So if we come to search and we type run, and then we open run up, and in the bar if we type msinfo32 and we press enter, that will then bring up this system information. Now in this system information, we're going to be looking for the baseboard manufacturer and the baseboard product. So the baseboard manufacturer is who made your motherboard. So as you can see here, it says MicroStar International, which is the longer name of MSI. And then the baseboard product here is the motherboard model. So the MAG Z790 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4. Now, if you cannot see that information within here, you're either going to need to physically look at your motherboard and figure that out, or if you still have the motherboard box, have a look at that. But either way, you need to figure out exactly what model of motherboard you have. Now, once you've figured out what model of MSI motherboard you have, you then want to come to the MSI website. And then if we come into products, motherboards, and then mine is the MAG series. If you're on a different series, you obviously want to select that. But as mine starts with MAG, that is the MAG series. Then I'm on the Z790 platform, so I'm going to select my Z790 for my chipset. And then as you can see, my motherboard is here, the MAG Z790 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4 edition. So if we click on that, and then on the page that comes up, if we then click on the support tab, and here is where we can see the latest BIOS releases. Now before you go any further with looking at which BIOS version to download, you need to look at what CPU you have just to ensure that any BIOS update that you install does support your CPU. So if we just come to settings and we come to system and I go to about, as you can see, I have an i5 13600K. So if we come back to the MSI page and we come to compatibility, we then need to find that CPU in this list. And there we go, there is the i5 13600K. And then the result tab shows you the oldest version that your CPU is supported since. So for me, any BIOS version newer than 7091V10 should support my CPU. Now I don't like MSI's BIOS naming, it is quite confusing. So once you've made sure that the BIOS version that you're going to be going to is going to support your CPU, we can then come back to the drivers and downloads page and we can then download the appropriate BIOS. So for me, I'm just going to go with the latest one as this should have the updates to help fix the problems with Intel's 13th gen and 14th gen CPUs. So if I download that, that will then download the BIOS file as a zip, and if I open that up, I will then just drag the contents of the zip file onto the desktop. And then if we look inside it, as you can see, there is a text document with just basic information about the BIOS version release, and then this is the actual BIOS file. So now we have our BIOS file, we're now going to need to get ourselves a USB that we can put the BIOS file onto. So I will just plug my USB in. And now I've got my USB plugged in, as you can see it is detected, however we need to format the USB in FAT32, as that is the only file system that most BIOSes are able to read. So if your USB isn't already FAT32, we're going to need to format it to that, and I would also recommend that you do not use a USB that has any data on that you want, as formatting it will wipe all of the data off it. So as you can see this is a 232GB USB and as FAT32 only supports up to around 32GB so we're going to have to create a partition on it that is less than 32GB that we can format to FAT32. So to do that if we come to search and we type create and format hard disk partitions and we open that up in the disk management if we then find the disk that is our USB so as you can see it is disk 1 here and then if we right click on it and we delete the volume, so we're going to be wiping all of the data off the USB. So if I click yes to that, that will then clear all the partitions off it and give it unallocated space. And again, that will clear all of the data off it, so do not have any data on it that you want. And then if we right click on the unallocated space and we click new simple volume, then we click next. And now we need to set the size of the partition that we're creating. So as we need to do FAT32, it needs to be 32 gigabytes or less. So if I put 32,000 megabytes in for the size, that will be just under 32 gigabytes as 1000 megabytes is one gigabyte. So if we click next and we leave it with its default letter assignment and then we make sure that the file system box here is changed from NTFS to FAT32. And then if you want to give your USB a different name, you can do. I'll just call it BIOS USB. And then if I click next and then finish, as you can see, it has now created a FAT32 partition on the USB. So now as you can see there is a 31.2 gigabyte USB detected and if we open that up we now just want to drag our BIOS file into it. 
So there we go, we've now copied across the BIOS file that we had downloaded onto the BIOS USB. So now what we need to do is we need to boot into the BIOS and then go to the correct section to get it to update the BIOS from a USB. Now just before we do that, I would recommend that you come and look at the manual and check there isn't a specific USB port for your motherboard that you should be plugging the USB into for BIOS updates as some motherboards will only detect an update USB in a certain port. So if I just download the manual and then if I just scroll through until it shows the labeling for the back panel. So there we go, as you can see that is this page here. Now if we look at the labeling, as you can see on my motherboard here, the port that is labeled number 11 is the flash BIOS port. Now I believe this is possibly just for if you want to use the other flash method where you press the button on the actual motherboard. However, if there is a USB port labeled for BIOS, I would recommend that you just plug the USB into that. That is usually the safest route to go down. So as you can see for me, that is going to be the USB port that is labeled as 11. So I will just go make sure that my USB is plugged into that port. And now I've made sure my USB is plugged into the correct part, we now need to boot into the BIOS. Now you can either do that in Windows by going to Start, then clicking the Power button, and then holding down the Shift key on the keyboard, and then pressing Restart. So doing that should bring us to this window here, where we can click on Troubleshoot, then Advanced Options, and then UEFI Firmware Settings, and then Restart. So that should now restart us into the BIOS. Now if that doesn't work for you, you can also just try searching up on the internet what the BIOS key is for your motherboard and then powering your computer off and then pressing that BIOS key button as your computer is starting up and that should get it to boot up into the BIOS. So here we go, we're now in the BIOS. Now it may look a little different to you depending on if you're in easy mode or advanced mode. So at the minute this is in advanced mode and as you can see at the top it says you can press F7 to switch over to easy mode. And again, we can press F7 to change over to advanced mode. So I'm going to be in advanced mode here, and I'm then going to select the M flash option down here. So if we click yes to reboot and enter flash mode, and now the computer is booted up into flash mode. As you can see, it's automatically detected the USB here. So if we go on that, as you can see, you can see our BIOS file that we put onto the USB inside of it. So if we click on the BIOS file here, and then we say yes, we're sure I want to select this file, it will now start installing that BIOS file. Right, so there we go, the computer has now finished flashing and has restarted itself, and as you can see, my BIOS version has now been updated, so we're on the latest release. So guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you found it helpful, don't forget the like button. If you decide to hit the dislike button, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you another time. Bye.